Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys for uh, making this 425 meeting. As you can tell, I'm a little squawky with my voice, so I will uh, attempt to not speak too much, but uh, we I'd, I'd like to do self introductions. I, I think it lends a little uh, personal touch to these zoom meetings. And uh, so hopefully, people are receptive to that. So if you could just say your name, your company and just like one sentence of why you're interested in the SCTA Citizens Advisory Committee. And I'll start out, John Bly, I'm with the head of the Engineering Contractors Association. Um, and I've been on this uh, Citizens Advisory Committee for about 12 or 13 years. I think it's important to uh, have a say in, in how these uh, Measure M funds are, are managed. And I find these meetings extremely interesting and rewarding. So with that, I will pass it over to Danny. Danny Sheehan. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, Danny Sheehan. I'm with the Sonoma County Alliance, but mostly I'm friends with Smart Citizens Advocacy Group for the Smart Train. And so my uh, interest is completely wonkish and I need a 12-step program, but I'm here. <laughs> You are here as, as part of our committee, or you're here as a guest? Uh, oh, as oh part of actually, board. part of the committee would be totally appropriate, the Sonoma County Alliance Transportation Committee, um, but then I mainly represent Friends of Smart. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Drew, why don't you introduce yourself? Good afternoon. Uh, so I'm Drew Nichols. I'm the clerk of the board for SCTA and RCPA. Um, I'm the one that you're going to, that spams your email with all meeting invites and uh, meeting announcements and anything related to the function of committees here. Fantastic. Dennis, everybody knows Dennis Harder. Hi, I'm Dennis Harder. Uh, I am uh, represent the Sonoma County Alliance uh, on this fine group. And uh, I've been involved uh, with um, the SCTA for many, many years and uh, helped develop Measure M. And uh, I'm here to make sure that we spend it as uh, we just planned on originally. Thank you for all your years that you've given us. Appreciate it. And you're still here, Dennis. Good job. There you go. Yeah. How's the hip, by the way, hip replacement? Uh, hip replacement, uh, two weeks from the day. It was great. Had my staples removed this morning. So I'm sitting a little easier this afternoon. Nice. Nice. James Cameron. You might be muted, James. No audio, James. There you go. I apologize. I got the double mute with the phone. Uh, my name is James Cameron with Sonoma County Transportation Authority and Regional Climate Protection Authority. Uh, my responsibility involves the projects and programming, as well as the financials, accounting, and administrative services of the organization. Thank you. Welcome. Ross, what do you do for SCTA? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, yeah, my name is Ross Clendenin, working for SCTA as well as RCPA, um, focusing on marketing and communication, as well as uh, supporting this meeting. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Elizabeth, welcome. Well, thank you. I'm Elizabeth Tyree with Sonoma County Regional Parks, and we enjoy building class one trails with Measure M funding. So thank you for having me to the meeting today. Wonderful. Looking forward to your, your speak too. Tom Banning. Hi, I'm Tom Banning, District 3, and I've been on the uh, on this committee for a couple of years now. And I'm here primarily as uh, interested in uh, bicycle infrastructure. I got recruited because through someone who knew I used to be on the board of the Bike Coalition. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Look forward to your, your slant on all this. And Mark Soylent. Good afternoon, Mark Soylent. I have a company that makes rock, soil, compost, and bark products. I am on this committee because I'm interested in transportation and saving the planet. Nice. Let's set the goals a little higher, will you, next time, Mark? <laughs> I'll try. David Oster. Hi, uh, yeah, my name is David Oster, and I represent the uh, first district on this. And I've been on the committee for about two years or so. And my background's in public finance. And I'd say uh, so far I've been listening and learning a lot. And 
I, it's, I, this is important work that the committee does, so I'm going to do all I can to support it. Thanks for uh, lending your expertise to the group. Orlando Ramirez. Hi, I'm a transportation planner for Caltrans District 4, uh, serving as the county liaison for the Office of System and Regional Planning. Thank you. Welcome. Tanya Narath. Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya Nareth, and I'm the Director of Climate Programs for the Regional Climate Protection Authority. And since transportation is about 60% of our greenhouse gas emissions, I have a very strong interest in transportation and really appreciate this committee's uh, insights and advice on all things related to climate. So I'm happy to be here. Welcome. Mosa Abbasi. Hello? Email. Musa. Someone talking, you know. Anyhow, this is Musa Bassi representing the Santa Rosa Chamber of Commerce, and uh, I serve on the committee for a few years, and uh, I have interest in transportation infrastructure in general. Thank you. Very knowledgeable, too. Dana, SCTA, tell us what you do. I am Dana Trey with the Sonoma County Transportation Authority. I'm a senior transportation planner here, and my focus is on active and shared modes of transportation. Active and shared modes. Thank you. All right. And let's see who else we got. We got Tom Conlon from Sonoma. Thanks all. Good to see everybody. Uh, Tom Conlon, Sonoma County Conservation Coalition. Our members are scared to death of climate change. And eager to see how this committee can solve our, our challenges in that area. Um, been on the committee for about five or six years. Welcome. Steve Bertelbaugh, Friends of SMART. Yes, uh, I've been on the uh, committee for since 2005, approximately. And uh, I not only am involved with Friends of SMART, but represent the Sierra Club to this organization. And I'm involved with the Transportation and Land Use Coalition. Uh, my interest is in getting people uh, the choice of using transit other than cars. And uh, I hope we're to see a big shift in the next uh, eight years. Thank you. Dependability, Steve, from our, at least from my sector, it's dependability. And frequency. Yeah. Uh, Chris Barney, SCTA. Hi, Chris. Yeah. Chris Barney with SCTA. So I work with the travel demand model and work on forecasting, data analysis, and, and mapping here at SCTA. Welcome. Good to see you again. Kurt Nichols, my old buddy. How you doing? Hey, good. Uh, Kurt Nichols, I represent the Building Industry Association on this committee and have for, I forget how long, but near the beginning of Measure M, I think maybe about Steve's uh, the date, somewhere in there. Um, and uh, I uh, am interested in all modes of transportation and I like staying involved with this committee to kind of know what's happening in, uh, locally here with uh, our transportation system. Oh, welcome. Kathleen, I think we're gonna finally get to your, uh, your agenda item later in this agenda, so. Welcome. Thank you. I am Kathleen Cortez. I work for the County Human Services Department Area Agency on Aging. My interest is increasing the mobility of older adults and people with disabilities and how we might be able to leverage Measure M funds to do so. Welcome. Mr. Richards. Uh, Willard Richards, uh, Sonoma County uh, Transportation and Land Use Coalition. Um, a, a longtime member of this committee. I'll also confess being interested in Friends of Smart. <clears throat> Thank you for all your years, too. Eris Weaver. Hi, I'm uh, <clears throat> Eris Weaver. I'm the executive director of the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition, and I'm involved to make sure bicyclists and pedestrian needs are taken into account. And I'm sorry, my voice is so bad, and I'm leaving my 
um, my video off because I am home recuperating from COVID and nobody needs to see how scruffy I look after several days in bed. Oh, sorry you had it. I had, I think I just had the regular flu, but you can tell my voice is scratchy too. Uh, David, Ruperta. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dave Rupert. I'm Assistant Director of Projects and Programming at SCTA, and I work closely with James and Shauna to help fund and deliver transportation projects. Welcome. Thank you. And Shauna Goss. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Shauna Goss with Sonoma County Transportation Authority, and I work with programming of transportation funding and project management. Great. Thank you. And Rick Luckman. Um, I'm the um, appointee of the League of Women Voters of Sonoma County. Welcome. And Gina Erickson. You there, Gina? If I recall correctly, Chair Bly, uh, Gina Erickson is a member of the SCTA uh, Transit Paratransit Coordinating Committee and a prospective member of this committee. Wonderful. All right. Ms. Kama. Thank you. Ms. Kama. Oh, Here I am again. Oh. Hi, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was muted. <laughs> hey, that's all right. Thanks, Gina. Um, thank you, guys. Um, good to put faces to names and a little bit of the story behind them. Um, Let's see, do we have any public comment tonight? Um, I guess technically I didn't see anybody on this call that's from the public, so we probably don't. But if somebody wanted to uh, say something, now would be the time. And I don't see anybody raising their hands, so let's move on to uh, action items, administrative approval of the March 28th meeting minutes. Thank you for putting them in our package. Um, so if there is a motion to accept. I will make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. second Any discussion or changes? Uh, any objection to the minutes as presented? I would say that motion carries. And let's move on to our Measure M presentation, Sonoma County Regional Parks. Who's taking it away? I will, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Shana. I'm going to rest my voice. Okay. Uh, as we do each month, the Ooh. committee is presented with a uh, project sponsor that receives Measure M funding, and this month you will be you will be receiving a presentation from the Sonoma County Regional Parks on three Measure M projects: the Bodega Bay Trail, Central Sonoma Valley Trail, and Sonoma Shellville Trail. And with that, I will turn it over to Elizabeth Tyree. Thank you, Shauna, um, and to all the participants today. I apologize in advance. I too have I have a cold, and I will have to sip some warm tea every once in a while. Hopefully, my voice will last through this presentation and for your questions. Um, I've also asked Drew to load this presentation and it looks like it's ready to go. So next slide, please, Drew. Um, as, as an overview, um, Sonoma County Regional Parks has been developing class one trails, meaning trails separated from the roadway um, for a number of years now. First on this list for the presentation is Bodega Bay Trail. Next slide, please. We've completed um, sections of this, 1.5 miles of this um, three mile trail so far. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the trail, this trail extends in the Bodega Bay area all the way um, from the Salmon Creek area to the north to um, uh, Doran Beach Regional Park to the south. Uh, there's uh, connections with uh, county parks, with state parks, to the village of Bodega Bay, uh, many places to stop between. And it's also part of the 1200 mile California Coastal Trail, connecting uh, coastal access all the way from Mexico to Oregon. Next slide, please. Here's a map overview of the trail, Bodega Bay Trail. 
And so going from the north um, um, near Salmon Creek and you see the little insert for Keefe Avenue, that's where the trail currently starts. That's an existing section of the trail. Um, we call that um, subsection Coastal Prairie Trail. Moving to the south, you go head toward the community center, the Bodega Bay Community Center. And as you go down the hill, that's the next stretch of trail we're working on, the Coastal North Harbor Trail that will take you down to Bay Flat Road. Um, and that is under engineering. Then there's the middle section along the harbor where in at the tides, the wharf, all along the, um, the more developed area of Bodega Bay. And then going south, Smith Brothers Road. This is on existing roadway. Um, so it is entirely separated from Highway 1. And then you head south to Birdwalk Coastal Access where it connects over the Cheney Creek Bridge. Um, and the existing trail connects to Doran Beach Regional Park. Next slide, please. So here's an overview of the Measure M funding allocated, $950,000. And it divides it into the projects um, that we just saw on the map. So the two underway right now are the Coastal North Harbor Trail. And we have $2 million match for the $348,000 that's allocated for this project. Um, and that's to the north end. And then to the southern end, the Smith Brothers Road section of trail, we have $1.4 million match um, to this trail project in a way. Both of these are in design and engineering and environmental review right now. We anticipate Coastal Harbor Trail is a longer term project. And so there's seed money, if you will, for the ongoing planning work that occurs on this developed portion of the harbor. Next slide, please. Here's an overview of the Coastal North Harbor Trail. Um, it's a little bit over half a mile of trail. And on the left side of this um, image, you see the community center. And you wind your way down the hill um, through Sonoma Coast State Park and all the way to East Side Road at the bottom. Um, this will be, um, this will be um, accessible, fully accessible for disabled access. So it'll meet the appropriate grades and um, surfacing. And this provides a really important connection off of Highway 1. Um, as many of us know that that's a really narrow section of Highway 1 and even the shoulders are limited in the section. So this will be a route for those of us who like um, to experience traveling through, walking through the parks and connecting to the community and sites um, separated from Highway 1. Right now this is planned for construction for construction in fiscal year 23-24. Next slide, please. And this is the other um, very active project down at the southern end of the project area along Smith Brothers Road. You see at the far right side of the slide, that's where it connects to the existing regional park um, Birdwalk Coastal Access. And you connect, there's a wide area along um, Highway 1 where you connect and then turn into Smith Brothers Road. Recently, our Board of Supervisors has approved transfer of some of the parcels along Smith Brothers Road. These were held by the Coastal Conservancy and they've been working for years to transfer to regional parks. So we see these as being future um, overlook areas, um, interpreted panel areas along the trail route. If you go to the left, which is to the north on this slide, you see a parking lot and that's um, for what's formerly known as the Bodega Harbor Yacht Club. And this recently, this last year transferred to the County of Sonoma and regional parks offers some of our programming um, staff um, from this location. And this will be developed as future access to shorelines. So the trail will provide connection to that. And then on the far left side, um, the trail will be connecting to the, um, um, the more developed areas along in Bodega, Bodega Bay. Next slide, please. 
<clears throat> pardon me, jumping ahead to Central Sonoma Valley Trail. Next slide, please. Here's a quick overview. So we've completed 0.7 miles of class one bike path. Um, as many of you know that this was a very narrow area of Highway 12 um, until more recently, both um, Caltrans and Transportation and Public Works Department completed um, additional sidewalks and bikeways here. This trail creates the full separation and an alternate route from Highway 20, from, I'm sorry, from Highway 12. Next slide, please. And here's an overview of the map. So the trails that have been completed that are in place right now are either in the, the red line, um, the green line where it crosses Larson Park, managed by regional parks, and the um, bottom of the photo, um, that's the north side of Maxwell Farms Regional Park, uh, where we completed the trail along Verano Avenue. Right now, with $40,000, we are taking the next steps for wayfinding signs to guide people through this corridor off of Highway 12 to help pe people better find the route separated from Highway 12. Next slide, please. Here's an overview of the expenditure of the 1.9 million in Measure M funding. We've spent $183,000 on the projects that were shown in the solid lines in the previous map, and we have 40,000 programmed for the design study and wayfinding signs. Future work in this corridor is much longer term because it would take negotiation with private property owners throughout this community, but with the wayfinding signs, we'll be able to guide people to an alternate route off of Highway 12. Next slide, please. This is a great example of the existing trail along Flowery School in the photo. Next slide, please. Moving ahead to Sonoma Shellville Trail. This has been one of the longest running um, um, negotiations in regional parks history. We've, um, as I presented to those members of the group that have been here in past presentations, um, the railroad operated this corridor in the 1900s and it changed ownership. It now held by Union uh, Pacific Railroad. That's a big change since the last presentation. We are currently working on um, a purchase and sale agreement with Union Pacific Railroad. So we hope to have um, bigger news soon, but just giving you a heads up that we are very close to acquiring this corridor for moving forward with the full trail. Um, much of it's parallel to 8th Street East, um, connecting to the existing path in the city of Sonoma all the way to the south um, and future connections to the San Francisco Bay Trail alignment, the regional trail. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Here's the map overview of the sections. There's a bunch of information here. Um, a lot of, lot of little pieces um, that take our actions over time, both working with um, private property owners as they develop their facilities along this corridor also working with Union Pacific throughout this time and negotiating the license from um, SMART at the southern end of the trail where it connects with 121 and Highway 12. So here's a summary of the expenditure for um, Measure M funding. Um, this has been used for scoping and right away and we see the future funding used for in, in future years for acquisition and next steps of development. So that's my overview for you today, and I'm open for your questions. Unmute comma, unmute comma, all plus a plus. for you. Um, how is this going to be accessible to, to the blind and visually impaired? Um, 
I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I didn't understand. I didn't hear all of the question. I said, how is this going to be accessible to the blind and vision impaired? Very good question. Thank you for repeating that. I appreciate it. So all of our um, projects are will be um, accessible for disabled access. Um, we will design um, that into how we're going to construct the trail for each of these each of these additional sections. Um, I'm happy to provide more detailed information on that as the designs are developed. Um, and thank you. That's a very important um, point to bring up. Right, because um, I represent the 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 paratransit user group and a lot of us are blind and we we uh, we use those areas too. So all right. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Tom Conlon. Thanks, Elizabeth. I appreciate the presentation. Um, I have one question that spans all three projects and then some specifics. Um, do you see these projects as, as having a vehicle miles traveled reduction impacts? Or are they primarily thought of as uh, like class one recreation uh, features of our of our local infrastructure. Thank you for thank you for that question. That's a very good question. I see them as providing both. And much of the transportation funding, if you will, they have to focus on vehicle miles travel, reducing um, vehicle miles. Um, and with areas, some areas such as Bodega Bay, which aren't as um, densely um, developed um, as other areas of this county. Um, these projects don't rank as high as projects in urban areas. However, all of those, all of us that live in Sonoma County, we would, if we were, say I'm camping at Dorn and I wanna go up to, up to buy a hot dog at the, the stand that is next to the post office there, I'm gonna use that trail instead of um, getting on the road. It's a hassle to go all the way out the driveway and then left on the road. Um, also, a lot of people like to see the sunset. Um, if, say they're camping at Dorn or they're camping at Sonoma Coast State Park. They would use that to go out to um, Bodega, Bet, Bet, Bodega Head, sorry. Um, so I see there's, there's an overlay between um, active transportation, reducing vehicle miles, and also the recreation use. And we know that recreation is one of the um, major attractions to Sonoma County. Thank you for the question. Just wondering though, if, if there's any quantitative uh, number, you, you alluded to the ranking, um, but how do we, for example, understand how these projects might rank against one another? In terms of the vehicle mile travel reduction. Right. So I, I always work. Um, I always work with Chris when I'm preparing my grant applications on um, what vehicle miles travel um, reductions we'd be seeing in each of these areas um, with the um, addition of this trail. Um, and so, yeah, they would. Yeah, and it's it's a wealth of information that's fed into these these applications as we seek funding. So you're saying the grants wouldn't be funded if there weren't some vehicle miles traveled benefits that could be quantified. Exactly. Okay, I guess in the future, I'd love to have that a little more central in these presentations because it's gonna become an increasingly important objective of the state's funding systems and certainly a concern of this committee. So um, the, the, the specific question I had had to do with sea level rise along Bodega. I asked that question last year when you presented and um, I'm just wondering if there's been more thought about, you know, a 2100 or, or 100 year uh, uh, horizon for planning in that very vulnerable area. Yes, and thank you for, for bringing that up again. Um, for example, at um, Dorn Park right now, we're 
we allocated funding for the existing infrastructure, how we are going to protect and preserve what's there, um, looking at new methods for um, maintaining access. Um, and even so far as projecting, thinking the future, future goals of providing camping opportunities, Dorn may not be the opportunity for all the camping on the coast in the future. It's the opportunity to look at other camping areas and connect to those for the type of facilities we want to use. But right now, each of these projects within the existing map all take into account um, sea level rise on the Bodega Bay corridor. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks, Tom. Steve, Bertelba. Yes, uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, uh, I have a couple of questions about the uh, Shellville Trail. I understand that most of it is on the former right of way of the what is now the Union Pacific. Uh, and I'm wondering if any of that was uh, subject to a rails to trails uh, uh, arrangement rather than struggling over the value. Oh, that's my, my hesitation. That's it's been we've backing up. So it hasn't been a rails to trails project specifically, but we've been talking in that framework with Union Pacific for the last five years, um, building in assurances that they are going to allow public use on this corridor. Um, we will be acquiring not only the right of way, but the um, underlying um, easements that in some cases can prohibit um, trail use on the corridor. Um, and so it will be providing clean title to the, the corridor, um, the underlying, the underlying um, easements and uses allowed on the corridor, as well as crossing some of the existing easements that are in place. So that's kind of a long um, winded answer to your question but it's been seen as a rail to trail project for some time now. Um, and we're at that point where we've negotiated, we're pretty close to signing on the dotted line that negotiating the agreement with Union Pacific Railroad. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, anybody have any other questions? Tom, you got a you got a follow up. I just wanted to say thank you for listening to us about the that segment of the Central Sonoma Valley Trail. We got some extra signage in that area, and I have noticed um, a dramatic improvement in the usage of the new trail because of that signage. So I just wanted to feed that back to you. Thanks again. You're welcome, and thank you for that feedback. I'll pass it along to the planner. Thank you. Great. And uh, I think that concludes us. And I think this is great to have these presentations, Elizabeth. This is the second or third time that we've been through this iteration with you, I think. And you do a great job every time. I guess my only question is how does the new uh, ownership of the railroad, how is that affecting can you go into any detail or is it a little touchy feely and um, is it a positive? Is it a negative? Uh, or the which section of railroad new ownership, or, the smart or the your your trail that you present you were talking about uh, the, the lo your long running trail over there in Sonoma. Oh. Uh, it's well, as you probably know, it's been envisioned by the community for decades now to have the trail along 8th Street East. Um, and you, and you, I'm sure you've seen too that you have right. that wide shoulder out there that much of it looks like a trail out there. Um, and the developers that we work with to condition that trail. Um, so it's been coming together in pieces and um, a, my feeling is that the community knows that we're out there, we're working on this, and um, many of the businesses 
see the positive impact a trail would have on providing um, improving access to their business for um, pedestrians, and cyclists, and people pushing strollers. So you want to go down 8th Street East, you wouldn't want to do it in the road now, right? Right. Well, thank you for the, all, all that you do for us in the community. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this point, I think we are moving on unless there's another question. But thank you, Elizabeth. Much appreciated. We'll see you at the next iteration in a year or two. Um, James, is this you uh, on 4B? Absolutely. Okay, buddy. Take it away. All right. Well, thank you. So I'm going to present to you the 2022 strategic plan. Uh, I will apologize that we, we plan to have this to you earlier in the year. The strategic plan includes our fiscal year 21 financials. Uh, we have, uh, you know, essentially compiled the documents um, a couple months late and have incorporated uh, and had a graphic artist prepare it uh, for, you know, a pleasable layout. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you, and we'll go through and, and look at uh, a high-level view of the document. So if I could get a heads up that, can I get a head nod, John, that you can see the document on? Yeah, get thumbs up. Thank you, sir. First off, here's a cover sheet of our strategic plan. Can you make uh, it we, bigger, we James? Uh, if I make it bigger, you won't be able to see the whole oh. page. So is All there right. something that I could zoom in on for you? No, thanks. Okay. So, and I, I'll, I'm going to apologize one more time. Uh, it'd be great if I had a PowerPoint to present this to you. I don't. So um, next time uh, there will be a PowerPoint uh, to make it a little bit more of a concise presentation. With, it, with that being said, uh, here's the cover sheet of our strategic plan. Uh, that we're now referring to as the strategic implementation plan. And the reason being is that a strategic plan essentially uh, emphasizes the what and the why. Uh, and we, we've done some other strategic planning at the SDTA and RCPA, whereas a strategic implementation plan really dresses the who, where, when, and how. And this strategic implementation plan is very similar to our past versions and gets into those details of the who, where, when, and how of Measure M. The contents of the strategic plan include the executive summary, the background, the strategic approach, the policies, a cash flow model that goes into not just the dollars that uh, we received to date and how we spent them, but how we plan to do that in the future, uh, our project information sheets with that high level detail similar to what Elizabeth Tyree uh, shared with you in the previous item, but for all of our jurisdictions projects that uh, deliver sections of the uh, Measure M, uh, you know, different projects and programs within Measure M. And then the last section is the appendix. So I'm going to take you through the document, highlight a few things, uh, and then we can open it up for questions. Right off the bat, there's the uh, two apportionment programs that we have. I will go ahead and zoom in on the section that I want to focus in on this page. And this, so essentially our two apportionment programs are our local streets and road rehabilitation and our local bus transit. Those apportionment programs are essentially passed through dollars that come to the SCTA and then are, are distributed to the 10 jurisdictions to repair pavement and maintain our roads, as well as our uh, three bus operators, which are Sonoma County Transit, which also services uh, Healdsburg, uh, which was had its own transit operator when the measure was passed, as well as uh, Petaluma Transit and City Bus. The next three programs are our project programs. So our project programs get into the specific projects that are being implemented, which is 20% for our local street projects. 40%, which goes to the Highway 101, uh, which is adding the carpool lane from the Sonoma County line all the way through to Windsor. And then 5% goes to Smart or Passenger Rail, uh, not focused on the, um, the mainline track itself, but focused on uh, the stations and the crossings. 4% uh, is, the, is the third uh, project program, which is for bicycle and pedestrian projects and then 1% is the administration. 
Jumping to revenue, looking at our historical revenue for Measure M, you can see the first year of revenue came in uh, towards the end of fiscal year 25, uh, of which we had a partial year. And then uh, we had our first full year in fiscal year 05 and 06. Here's the growth, as you can see, as we went through the measure up into our audited revenue uh, from fiscal year 21. Looking at our averages, you can see that uh, you know, our 10-year average, we've been at 5.8. Uh, all the data that we have here, the average uh, percentage increase for the histor history of the measure is 3.8%. Jumping to those uh, apportionment programs and looking at uh, the forecasting of the entire sales tax measure, uh, the apportionment programs that have happened to date for local street repairs have, um, have, a, have a current forecast of uh, $90 million. And uh, those would be the dollars that would go to the 10 jurisdictions to repair streets. Uh, our other apportionment program that I talked about was transit, which is 10%, which has approximately $45 million that would go through. If you look at our, our 2021 forecast for all of these programs, uh, what you'll find is that we're forecasting at about 96% of that original estimate that was put together that went to the voters back in 2004. So we estimated 470 million and uh, our, current, our current forecast uh, uh, as of fiscal year 21 financials is 452 million. Jumping a little bit more now from those apportionment programs and total revenue forecast to our project program. We have our Highway 101 project program. And so for Highway 101 here, and try to jump back to where I wanted to be. So I, I, I was wanted to highlight at the bottom of the screen here, uh, our Highway 101 projects themselves that, uh, that have programming shown within our uh, 2020 strategic plan. I'm not, I'm not scrolling as good as I'd like to scroll, but I'm trying to blow it up as requested since the, the one screen view is hard to see. So the, the focus of this um, page that I'm jumping to shows essentially, uh, you know, Wilfrid Central North, um, Marinsino Moneros Petaluma and Marinsino Moneros Narrows. Those are the components of Highway 101 that were identified in the voter approved sales tax measure. And these shows, these show the, uh, the programming and expenditures uh, that have happened uh, prior to the um, this this plan, and then also going into the future uh, of what is programmed to continue to do that work out on Highway 101. Our LSP program. Those are thousands of dollars, right? Correct. Correct. Our LSP program is. Here's our LSP program. So for, for the LSP program, this is programming that came to this committee in March of last year and was approved by our board in May of last year. And, and it is to deliver these specifically listed projects within the, um, the voter approved expenditure plan uh, that all have a $2,004 associated with them. And as, as those who have been on this committee longer know that SCTA has, ad has adopted a policy on a first come first serve basis. So these jurisdictions that were ready to deliver and ready to move, for move forward with these projects, they got the dollars first. The jurisdictions that weren't ready to move forward with their projects, there is gonna have to be some reconciliation at the end if the sales tax measure continues to fall below um, the, the, the expected revenue that was expected in 2004. Our next programming to point out that also went to this uh, committee in March and to our board in May of March of last year and then to our board in May of last year is for our bicycle and pedestrian programming. So this, is, this programming um, after it was approved is incorporated into the strategic plan, uh, essentially programming all the way through the end of the, um, the sales tax measure in 2024. Now that doesn't mean that, that just means revenue is going to stop. It doesn't necessarily mean that all the expenditures will have, have occurred. Our last project program to highlight is a smart passenger rail program. 
On this sheet, I would just show you that there's a brief narrative that's written about SMART uh, that essentially talks about how SMART has borrowed ahead to deliver their program. And when they borrowed ahead, they first did a, um, an inner program loan that they paid back, they, as well as paying back some 2011 bonds that they did. And now we did some refunding of those bonds in 2001. So they're paying back an inner program loan um, for the refunding of those bonds, which recognized an interest rate savings. But in this narrative, you'll see there is a $5 million capacity that's currently estimated with SMART that would be available to them to continue to implement um, it's the SMART projects that are eligible under Measure M in the future. Uh, this strategic plan also starts to touch on Go Sonoma. Go Sonoma will be its own strategic plan in and of itself and have its a list of projects that are not specified within the expenditure plan. So it will be open to any projects that meet the programming categories under Go Sonoma. And as you can see by this graphic in the lower right hand corner of your screen, uh, the uh, Go Sonoma program uh, ex um, ex expects to start generating revenue in April of 2025 and extends through March of 2045. Uh, as part of the SCTA's 2021 funding program that has been to this committee and will be back to this committee um, in June or July, uh, there will be some initial uh, programming recommendations in Go Sonoma for this committee to consider. The next chapter in the strategic plan is policies. Uh, this, this essentially just summarizes all of the policies that have been approved and have gone to this, gone to this committee in the past. It gives you uh, the latest and greatest information in, in one location. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and point out two that have been uh, as of note recently. The first one would be policy number 14. Policy 14 is maintenance of effort that this committee took action on in the past, looking at those three years rolling averages making sure that our jurisdictions are, are committed to um, continuing to expend the same local discretionary funds that they have in the past without supplanting the Measure M LSR funds uh, with other funds. The other policy to point out to you is policy number 15. The reason why I'm pointing out policy 15 is Ross is gonna give you a presentation after this to talk a little bit about the CAC body. And I will say one of the primary function of the CAC is policy 15, uh, where the CAC will advise the SCTA on contracting with a quali qualified audit firm um, and the administration of Measure M, and then SCTA will present the findings at the annual audit. So every October, the full independent audit for Measure M comes to the Citizens Advisory Committee. Our next chapter is chapter five, which is the cash flow model. This is those funds that I was talking about is not just the expenditures to date, but also once you go beyond fiscal year 21, which are the actual expenditures within the strategic plan, you then have projected funding. So when we're talking about SMART earlier, this is, an, this is where I can show you an example of SMART's cash flow model, where we look at the um, expenditures and revenue. And when we go to the end of the measure, there's approximately $5 million that's gonna be available. So what's gonna happen is SMART is, is looking for opportunities to leverage those funds and they're applying for other grants. And at some point when they're successful with those other grants, we're gonna be coming to this committee saying, hey, SMART wants to program these dollars um, as part of the ideally the next strategic plan that we do uh, so that they can leverage other fund sources to deliver um, eligible projects on the SMART um, rail system. The last piece is the project info sheets. Uh, project info sheets are for all three of those project categories that I, that I described, um, that are the projects that are listed within the sales tax um, expenditure plan. Um, to give you a flavor of what's in here in Highway 101, we have exhibits like this that really show that success that we've had today to date. The, the bottom of your screen is the section in Marin that is not eligible for Measure M funds, but essentially this blue, blue piece was made completely uh, possible by the passage of Measure M. And we have this last little southbound section to complete in Petaluma that we expect to finish by the end of the year. The local street projects program, those are the specific listed projects within 
the sales tax measure and they're listed here. And then they have a specific info sheet for each um, project. So you not just have to wait for, you know, the presentation from the project sponsor at this meeting at any time you can go back and get the latest information for any project within uh, measure M. The same map for uh, the bicycle and pedestrian projects that are listed in the expenditure plan and eligible for programming in Measure M. Uh, and then I'll just show you a couple examples of info sheets here. So this is one for Arnold Drive that was presented to you earlier this year by Janice Thompson uh, at uh, Sonoma County Transportation and Public Works, where we have the Arnold Drive project. The expenditure plan amount uh, expenditure plan description at the top is the actual expenditure plan that went to the voters. The additional project details is what this committee reviews and approves when they approve programming. It's the specifics of what's going to be implemented for that broader expenditure plan description. So you'll typically see the additional project details as a subset of the expenditure plan description. And then project schedule and status. This is one that's in the early developmental stages, working on design. They're planning to go to right away in 2023 and construction in 2024. They do have some existing needs. So they're looking to fill about a $900,000 funding gap, um, but they do have you know, their $1.2 million that they brought to the table, as well as the $2 million uh, in measure and bike and ped funds to deliver these improvements on Arnold Drive uh, in the Sonoma Valley. The next example I'll show you without going into in too, too much detail is Foss Creek, where we put this big completed. It's a way to celebrate the successes that we've had in the sales tax measure uh, and, and, the, and the great work that we've done, essentially um, delivering these six different phases of Foss Creek over the years um, and the work that the city of Healdsburg has done in implementing that. Uh, to close, I'll just point out there's an appendix, and uh, this is one of the most uh, used appendixes that are within the strategic plan. It is the actual language from the sales tax voter. So when we talk about our strategic implementation plan and our policies that we're doing, some of those are at C CAC can make recommendations that can then go to the board to um, have various policies to for implementation. But then there's the voter approved section that, take, that, that is really our guiding document or higher level document that we follow um, to develop a lot of those policies and the implementation of the plan. I'll close just by saying that the programming that was approved for this strategic plan was for, uh, for all the jurisdictions, we were able to meet all of their requests. So essentially any jurisdiction who had a project within Measure M and wanted to do work on that project, we were able to get them the funds um, that were available to them within the expenditure plan. There was not a cash flow issue um, for the for the delivery of the project for the delivery of the projects that were ready to go. With that, the ask of this committee is that uh, you know a recommendation to the board to uh, approve the 2022 strategic implementation plan. And, uh, and, and we would take that to the board in June. Uh, we do have time if the board uh, wants to provide comments or provide comments um, you know, through essentially the end of the week if, to go back to, um, before we go back to the graphic artist to finalize the document. Uh, if we plan to not have a CAC meeting in May and actually get this to the board um, in July. So thank you. Wow, well done. A lot of information there. Um, you're, you're looking for us to approve this implement, implementation plan. So my suggestion is um, let's go ahead with a motion and a second, and then we can get into discussion and questions uh, if everybody else feels that, that that's the appropriate way to handle it. So I'll make the motion that we accept um, this 2022 implementation plan as presented. I'll second that. And so that goes straight into discussion. So Tom has the, has the first uh, salvo here. Thank you. Great. Thank you, uh, James, and everybody for getting us this far on this. Um, yeah, so I think I understand um, where the measure, where we are in the measure. And I think this implementation plan is a, is a big step toward kind of, kind of getting us toward the end of measure M planning the forecast through the end. So I see that as a, as a big step forward. 
I want to be sure I understand how the local streets program uh, is performing. And I, I found that Highway 101 graphic, which shows the segments that have been completed, very compelling. I mean, that's a wonderful story to be telling. Um, I don't feel I have the same clarity on the local streets program. So I'm wondering if we could get a graphic in the, this implementation plan that would explain what was originally in the measure as a project. Maybe a different color to indicate what you just said that the jurisdictions promoted certain projects because they were actually willing to promote those projects and those ha have been funded through Measure M to its capacity. And then there's a different category of local streets program projects that this basically the jurisdictions were not able to come up with the, the requests of Measure M, just so that the, everybody's clear on where that project, where that program is. Does that make sense? Is that a helpful thing or is that uh, confusing to people? I'm just curious if that, that's how I'm thinking about it at least. I think it could, Tom, it could get very confusing because we're asking to kind of overlay three or four different things on, on one deal. The, 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 the simplicity of the 101 deal just shows, you know, hey, they're, they're all in. All the projects are in for the northbound HOV lane, and we have one segment left on the southbound. So it's a much simpler visual, if you will. I, I like your idea if we can make it nearly as simple as what the 101 is. And I, I kind of lean on uh, James and, and staff, other staff to kind of come up with something if they could. Yeah. W would you like me to share my screen for just one minute and I could talk to that? Yeah. So uh, if I go to so. Essentially, this is the graphic information that, that Tom was referring to where, you know, projects that have been delivered are essentially going to have hit this 2004 number and, and projects, and, and this is where they're really at. So you have projects like Bodega Highway that has nothing has happened out there. Uh, River Road, nothing has happened out there. Um, Farmers Lane, you've had minimal investment in right of way. Um, but there's still significant programming left. Uh, and, then, and then you have kind of that third category of um, like old Redwood Highway Interchange, where it's like they spent it all and that, that thing is built. So to, to summarize something into three categories uh, would, would possibly be, you know, okay, but I, I do get concerned about like if we were to take this graphic, you know, we could, we could potentially color code you know, status of these were, you know, unprogrammed, partially programmed or completely programmed, right? So you could have like a, a green, which is you're, 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 you're completely programmed. The yellow means you're processing. And then, you know, a red would be like nothing has happened on this project. Or we could try to do two categories. I would, I would leave it up to the committee, I think, but um, I, I'm open to making, you know, making improvements to this uh, this graphic, if it's going to be helpful and not overcomplicated. Yeah. I think it just gets more confusing. I think that uh, you have the graph that's there as the dollars and one can kind of see it from there. But, uh, well, I, I guess that... the other thing I'm curious about is <clears throat> that list is that's the complete <clears throat> Measure M projects list for LSP or are there other things that aren't on that list that were in Measure M? Okay. So um, then the table, you're right, Dennis, that table is, is really the, the detail, I guess, maybe some of those projects are com fully complete and some of those are still not complete. I guess that's really the, the determining difference I'm, I'm trying to make sure is clear because 101 is really simple. It's one project. But the other category is 20% of the dollars. And I'm not even clear, having sat on this committee for all these years, um, how many of those projects are 
complete uh, as voters were told they would be funded you know, for, by the measure. I, so that, those, are, those are my comments. I, I hope. Yeah. Um, uh, Dennis, first for comments. Uh, sure. Questions? First of all, uh, comment about, so this is, I open up to this other questions. Uh, James and, and group, first of all, what an awesome document. I mean, it is, really does a great job of the history where we're at, where we're going and everything else. So really one, really well done. Uh, only thing, uh, clarification that I was looking for, page 13, James, if you could, back to your graph and also your narrative. So, and it has to do with uh, the 2021, uh, uh, 28 million seven. In the narrative, it says that it's uh, the actual audited and in your uh, graph of uh, a table 3.1, you have a footnote that says it's the unaudited financial statements. So maybe you want to either uh, take out that footnote to a uh, reference there, because I think those are actually the audited numbers, but I, I'll let you decide what we got. Thank you. They are fully audited numbers. I will remove uh, footnote two. They're no longer an estimate. Right. There you go. Eagle eye harder. Way to pick it up. <laughs> Steve. Well, I think this really uh, uh, represents uh, uh, the, the quality of work that the staff has done. Um, and I can remember sitting through some of the uh, efforts to get things funded. And, you know, Suzanne just worked magic uh, on some of them. Uh, so it's good to look back at. <clears throat> I'm a little bit concerned looking forward that we may be putting pressure on uh, the agencies to spend the money before the end of the 20 years. And it might be, uh, I, I'm asking, is there a way that we can carry some of the funds into the, or past the deadline? Um, if there are projects that they want to do that uh, uh, that they're not ready to do, I, I I would not like to put pressure on people to get the money spent uh, so that it's spent in ways that aren't as productive as if you took a couple of extra years to expend the money. So yeah, that, that, that gets beyond the the, the report, I'm sure. But uh, I think it's something we need to think about. So since, the, since the forecast revenue is now at 96%, and then um, you know, this cash flow model actually estimates a 3% growth, we're looking at probably closer to an 8% growth this year, and that 96% keeps getting higher and higher and closer to 100%. There's, there's a little bit less of an urgency um, for them you know, to get there for that first come first serve policy with regard to, um, you know, ex extending it after it absolutely will the fund, the funds don't just disappear or get moved somewhere else. Right. So there is the opportunity to, um, you know, have that sales tax measure go well into the future um, without getting into all the specifics of an expenditure plan amendment. I will say anything that ever gets amended will be going through this committee. Uh, and I'll also say that our Highway 101 program has mitigation and monitoring requirements that are going to um, not even begin until later this year when we do some planting and they're going to go on for the next 10 years. So we're going to want those dollars available to help fund that mitigation and monitoring of the planting on Highway 101 for at least another decade. So there, the, it's not going to be a Measure M, you know, special revenue fund, but it will be a fund within SCTA uh, that that continues to to deliver these efforts uh, with the funds that are remaining after revenue stops. Good. Awesome. Great job. 
Great job, James. And good comments, you guys. Thank you. Tom, Dennis, and Steve. So I would just uh, amend my, or I would request to amend the motion to approve with adding a green dot on those projects that are fully complete on that map, if that's acceptable to the motioners and to this committee. As yeah, that would then, stupid question, would that be a green dot on the map? Would that be a green highlight on the table of projects? I was suggesting the map, as James had indicated, that he would be able and willing to do. I'm okay with that amendment. Is the second, or I think it was Dennis, uh, are you okay with that amendment to the motion, Dennis? I still think it's more confusing, but because uh, I, I just look at dollars, I guess, and I could see what's done, what's not done. Uh, but if you wanted to show that they're completed or uh, again, it doesn't tell the whole story. They could be partly, you know, under process or, you know, in, in line. So I don't know. Uh, uh, I think it's going to be more confusing, but whatever. I am agreeable to whatever uh, we need to move forward with. Tom, you feel strongly about it? Because it sounds like Dennis is kind of ambivalent about it, which maybe, maybe it's because I don't know the numbers as well as Dennis does. And that's part of the confusion that I personally experience in that table. If if it says measure M nine thousand dollars and another in those last those line, if those last two columns line up with the same number, does that mean the project is complete? Or does that mean that the project has used all of the Measure M money that was allocated to it. That's I, that's the question that I have because I think those numbers are not the full cost of the project, right? They're just the Measure M allocation to the project. So that's that's the piece of data that seems to me to be missing in the implementation plan for LSP. I will I will add that when we referenced on the info sheets, as I did on Foss Creek with the complete Foss Creek Trail does have additional segments that still need to be constructed. What's complete is that all of the Measure M dollars have been expended implementing segments of Foss Creek. So that almost makes a fourth category from the other three that I talked about. Right, and I guess I'm, ju I'm, I'm juxtaposing that to Highway 101, which of course had similar buckets of money that had to be pulled together from rabbits from hats to make that happen. Um, I'm just, I know that LSP is really challenging, right? Uh, with the jurisdictions having to come up with, with uh, match funds and uh, all the local issues that are more complex. So um, I guess I don't, I, I, feel, I feel strongly that the, the story needs to be told. I'm not sure how best to tell it. And maybe I'll have some more thoughts on this after the meeting, but I, I hope I'm not the only one that has the same desire for this report to, to do a really good job of making that clear to the public. But isn't it, if you go back to the, the end of the report where it has each one of the, the local streets and roads project, Tom, doesn't it actually do a narrative where it says this phase of it is completed, these are still the open ones. So, you know, go to Hearn Avenue, go to, uh, go to um, gee, any of those, Farmer's Lane Extension. And, and so if you go back into that section, it actually does go through the whole narrative and one can see what it needs to do for the whole project versus what's expended today. And this is where you catch me, Dennis, on not having read the report at, with the okay. prior. Yeah, so if you go back to the, the pages the, in the back, you, you'll see that each one of those LSP programs are detailed uh, and it talks about the dollars that are spent to date and what's still needed. Right, uh, so I was looking for kind of a graphic to simplify that, to make it easy for the politicians to mm -hmm. tell the story to their local jurisdictions, but... Um, you know, that's what this committee's for, I think, is to hash these issues out and, and to do the best job we can of supporting staff and, and the decision makers. 
So I don't, I, 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 I'm glad to hear that information really is in the report, Dennis, and I'll, I'll take a look at it. I'll withdraw, I'll withdraw my, uh, my request for, a, for an amendment though, if that's, if you feel strongly about it. Yeah, and, and uh, James, on, on my other comment about the footnote, it's also in, in, uh, on uh, table 3.2 that you got to do the same, or get rid of that other, the footnote reference there also. So it's in 3.1 and 3.2. Thank, thank you, thank you very okay. much, Dennis. And any, anybody else who's yep. reviewing the document who has something, please feel free to email Shauna and I for the, the clerical stuff like that. We'll, we'll get it edited. Yep, yep. Yeah, and I think what we'll end up doing is, uh, uh, I don't know if we need to amend the motion or the second when we do come to the vote, but is it understood that clerical issues will be taken care of, or do we need to amend the motion to include that in your guys' opinion? I think it's assumed. I think it's assumed as well. I would agree uh, with Dan that. Yeah. Danny, uh, you had your, your question up there? Well, actually, I just had a comment and because I did review the document and I just found it to be like a whole wealth of material. This is a public person, not a politician or having to answer. And, and I have to answer to the public on our Facebook page. And, you know, that, that gives me so much ammunition <laughs> to counter some of this. And so I just urge the board to approve it and, and whatever you have to do to tweak it is less important than getting it out to the public and and so that I so we can use it. Um, but for Joe Public or Josephine Public, pff, spot on. Love it. Okay, Josephine Public. Much appreciated. Good comment, Danny. Oh, with that, I think we have uh, uh, exhausted our discussion. So we'll call for the question. All those uh, in favor of uh, accepting the implementation report with the clerical mm -hmm. understanding that they'll be taken care of, uh, raise your hand and signify with an aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed to the approval of the implement implementation plan? Any abstentions? Great job, James, and, and to this committee, great job. Thank you. Did you catch Kathleen's you. abstention? I think I saw Kathleen's Oh, hand no, there. I did not. I didn't. I saw it. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> okay. Um, financial statements. All right. So I'll I'll take you briefly through the financial statements that are in our packet, just as an overview to some of the new members, what what's actually included, and then jump into some of the the reports that are also presented in the packet. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and do that that share screen again. Uh, looking at the the uh, the financial statements kicking it off. So the first the first pay, first financial statements that are included in the packet are our March year to date um, enterprise financial statements balance sheet or tri trial balance. So this takes us from the beginning of the fiscal year, which is July one, through the end of March, which is a summary of all the fund sources or all the programs within Measure M. Uh, the the ne the next one is the actual end of, it does the same time period, but it's doing it fund by fund. So there's one for Measure M, there's one for those local street projects, there's one for Highway 101, there's one for the bond um, debt service. Then uh, for that same time period from July 1 through end of March, there's, it's available in tabular format. This is easier to digest than those actual financial statements where you can just look purely at, at expenses and revenue, I mean, ex revenue and expenditures um, by program, uh, which are the columns across the top. And then the last report that's available to the CAC monthly is inception to date. So dating, going all the way back to that first uh, revenue source that came in from the state for the sales tax dollar and how we've spent all of it, including pass through dollars when we've uh, leveraged funds from other fund sources. Also included in your packet is the, uh, the latest newsletter, which we just received uh, earlier this, this week, excuse me, er, last week from uh, HDL, which talks about what's going on with sales tax, looking at um, uh, previous quarter of uh, 2000 to the fourth quarter of 2001 and what's happening with um, the various major business groups 
there's a there's a narrative here that you could read through as to what's happening with the sales tax in Sonoma County, as well as there's another table that you can look at what's happening with sales tax in these major business groups in other Bay Area counties as well to compare. That's what's actually happening. Then also in your packet is the California forecast, which is going to forecast where where California is going to be at the um, end of the current fiscal year that we're in, and then also looks forward to the next fiscal year, um, looking at growth trends. And then the biggest thing that's, that has impacted uh, sales tax revenue during uh, COVID has been uh, those online sales and online sales versus brick and mortar. This chart was shared with the CAC uh, about a year ago, and we're coming to a point where you're going to have these jaws, uh, you know, slap shut or the lines we're going to cross or we're going to potentially have you know more um, online sales than brick and mortar but based on you know coming out of this this pandemic uh, you can see the sharp increase over the past year um, in brick and mortar sales and a tapering of online sales um, keeping those lines separate uh, and uh, you know showing the the shopping habits of folks that are, that are able to um, you know, do less online shopping and actually return to those brick and mortar storefronts. Uh, with that, I would just uh, answer any questions or go into any more detail on the reports or the financials that the committee would like. Really interesting visual seeing those sales tax uh, trends coming out of the pandemic. I don't have any questions on it. I think it's well done. Okay. Do you need a, you don't need any action on that day. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, James. We are on to Kathleen's. This is going to be kind of cool. The overview of the SCTA citizens advisory committee. Um, who has, who's got that for SCTA? Is that Drew Ross? Um, I'll, I'll be doing it. Chair. Okay. Thank you. And then, uh, I will go ahead and share my screen. Uh, can, can you go back just a little bit on, on, on what originally Kathleen was asking, just to refresh us, because it was uh, two or three meetings ago, if you remember. Yeah, and I, I apologize. I actually was out um, the meeting when that question was asked, but uh, basically got a brief presentation. My goal is to summarize the, the purpose, the history, and the membership um, of this committee. And uh, being relatively new myself, it's been good to Good to get that locked in and um, define that for myself as well. Great, thank you. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen. Drew, is that looking good? Looking good, Ross. Thank you very much. So, um, Based on the request and um, the fact that we have some new representatives on the committee, we'd like to provide a brief high-level overview of the Citizens Advisory Committee, um, summarize its purpose, history, and its procedures. So as defined in the strategic plan, CAC's role is to provide public oversight on the implementation of Major M and the Go Sonoma Act as we move forward. The CAC is composed of community stakeholders and five members of the public at large, appointed from each supervisorial district. The committee is intended to provide transparency of the project delivery process for the general public. Uh, the RCPA equivalent would be the CAAC, the Climate Action Advisory Committee. And here you'll see the community committee uh, organization chart. Uh, the Citizens Advisory Committee is a critical component in SCTA's planning, funding, and implementation process um, and helps to provide oversight and review of these activities. Uh, you'll see the hierarchy of SCTA and RCPA's committees and how the CAC uh, in red fits into the overall organization. The Citizens Advisory Committee is also closely aligned with the SCTA Technical Advisory Committee. Uh, which provides the review and oversight from the perspective of public works agencies and jurisdictions. CAC membership, uh, changes to the CAC membership roster requires an amendment uh, of the original ordinance. Since 1991, this process has occurred seven times. The process requires two SCT, 
SCTA board actions and 30 day waiting periods, as well as public postings in the Press Democrat and other forums. The most recent amendment occurred in 2020 to reduce the quorum threshold and fix some pronouns in the charter language to better address uh, equity concerns. And here's the list of current member organizations. And uh, please let us know if you have any questions on the CAC's purpose or procedures. Thank you very much. That was the, that was the short version. Kathleen? Um, thank yeah. you, by the way. Yes, for the thanks for the presentation. I, um, sure, sure. I just wanted to ask, um, the reason why I didn't comment on the last uh, agenda item was that I believe that when Measure M came to the voters, it was um, said that it was to improve the mobility of all residents, especially seniors and people with disabilities. And because I'm new to this committee, I haven't really seen um, what Measure M projects are geared towards that, improving the mobility of seniors and people with disabilities. And when I look at the membership of this committee, to me, it looks like it's a climate committee. There's a lot of organizations that are focused on climate. Um, and I don't see the citizens of Sonoma County represented in that more than a quarter of our population is Spanish speaking and 30% of our citizens are age 16 over. So I'm just struggling. I get a lot of calls about transportation challenges from all over the county. Um, and so my people are asking, can Measure M help you know, improve the mobility of seniors and people with disabilities? Is that what we're paying the taxes for? Um, so that's it. I'm over 60, way over 60. Thank you, Kathleen. Eris, did you have a, was there a comment on there? I think we're all over 60. Uh, yeah, over I just... 60. Yeah, I, I think actually the, the seniors of people over 60 are overrepresented probably <laughs> on this group. People with, people with small children and I think people with uh, uh, certain kinds of mobility disabilities may be underrepresented. Um, and, and yeah, I, th I think definitely there are there are groups who are not fully represented here, but I don't think people over 60 are one of them. <laughs> Just to just to jump in briefly, I'll, I'll let um, possibly other other people follow up. But um, you know, the, the CAC does work alongside the transit paratransit coordinating committee, and that that is a big focus of of that committee. So I did just want to want to bring that up briefly. Thank you, Ross. Steve. Well, the idea that someone from that committee might attend these meetings and perhaps even be a member uh, occurred to me. And I wonder if it wouldn't be good for this committee to have representatives from some of the other uh, committees. Um, that's, that, that, that could increase the size of this committee substantially, but uh, I, I attend all of the uh, transit TAC meetings and it's very informative. And maybe we do it the other way around. Maybe we can assign one of us to uh, attend each of the other meetings so that we can bring back uh, uh, the information that doesn't get into their minutes, but might be important. The, the other issue is since the members of this committee are appointed by the individual groups, uh, it's a little hard to get the kind of diversity that we're talking about. Um, food for thought. 
Yeah, I think that's I think that's part of the issue. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who else they, the, that they would tap at the ECA. Maybe Mark Soyland, perhaps. But uh, Dennis, comments? Oh, just comments that you know. Over my lifetime in BNS committee, we've had representatives from Paratransit that have come and, and participated in the meetings. Uh, they haven't sent anyone for many years. And same with the Council on Aging. They had uh, uh, Dusty, uh, whatever, but, uh, but anyway, we've had people over the years come and go that have been active in the committee and put insight and input into it. So it's happened, it's there. The openings are available. I think just filling those slots by the various organizations would be great. Mute comma, currently mute comma. I'm here for, for, from the, from the, the, the paratransit users group, if that's helpful. Thank you. Tom? I see Steve's hands up before mine, so I'll let him go first. Oh, I thought, I think that was a leftover. Maybe, a, you, did you have another comment, Steve? I think we got him, Tom, go ahead. Great, thanks. Um, I was just gonna point out that on the uh, page two of our packet is the, attendance of uh, those groups that are appointed to this committee. And um, so it's great to hear someone from transit, uh, paratransit coordinating committee is here today. I think that's the first time in a while. And we, we'd love to have that input. I'm, I've been appreciating Kathleen's uh, input from the aging, aging, aging area agency on aging. I think I got that right. Um, and, um, yeah, I th we, we've had a problem getting, as do most of the committees around the county, a, di a difficulty in getting um, uh, these meetings to be representative of our community. So uh, any ideas we can, I'd be supportive of ideas that can make this committee more responsive to the citizenry. Agreed. Well, all right, seeing no other comments. Um, I think we're there. Uh, if there are any announcements, um, oh, did we want to go over the uh, draft of the board of directors agenda? Yeah, Chair Bly, I, I have it pulled up just to uh, show to the committee for this item. Whoops, wrong one. Hey. Did I get the right one? No, uh, it was there, I think. Oops. My apologies on that. Harris, I didn't mean to miss you. Did you have another comment before we moved on? Oh, I just wanted to make a short announcement that uh, we're coming up May is um, bike month. And so we have our whole suite of different activities that will be happening and looking a little more like bike month used to look before COVID. And we just sent out the announcement of, um, we used to call this award Bike Commuter of the Year, but given the changes in how people move around and where they go and don't go, it's now Bike Champion of the Year, uh, is uh, Juan Chavez, who is the originator of the Santa Rosa Taco Tuesday Rides. And you can uh, read more about it at our website at bikesonoma.org. Thank you. And Drew, did you uh, did you want to take another sh shot at putting that draft uh, agenda up there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so I think I got it now. Here's our draft, uh, the draft agenda for the May 9 um, SCTA RCPA Board of Directors meeting. Um, let me know if I need to zoom in to make the items bigger or otherwise. Or if there's anything of note. Um, quick question, is the maintenance of effort uh, an offshoot of the decision we made last month to kind of hold the line on that maintenance of effort? Is this the first time it's come up since we, we made our recommendation? Yes, Mr. Chair, that's right. We, were take, we are taking that same item to the board. Okay, be interesting to hear the reaction to that.
And uh, with that, I just want to compliment the SCTA staff and leadership once again, and compliment this committee. Very diverse uh, background for all of us. And yet we're able to come together respectfully, collaboratively, and work through all these myriad of issues and so forth. Thank you guys all for putting up. Tom, if I could just, as I appended at the last meeting, if I could just append yeah. a comment about SB 922. I had yeah. raised concerns about that. And I'm very pleased to see that it's now, uh, Sierra Club had issued a letter and has now removed its opposition to that bill. So I don't know the details of it, but I, I did want that committee. I wanted to close the loop on that. So thank you again. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you all. We're adjourned. See you next month.